Good morning, guys. Thank you for joining me live. I am not dressed up very well, but that is because it's very messy working with resin, so it's important to wear clothes you don't mind if you mess up. Uh, for those of you that don't know, my name is Stacy Erickson. I run a business in Regina called Dare to Dream Designs, and I focus on recycling art. Hopefully you've already got my list of things that you're going to be needing today. And I am going to do my best at not updating or uh, changing the film too much, seeing as I am actually filming this, sorry, I filmed this quite a while ago in order to be able to have future me sitting with you guys live. So any questions that you have, I can answer as I am going. So this is pre-recorded but it is live in the sense that I'm going to try very hard not to edit myself out when I say things or get nervous. <laughs> I'm not, uh, this is my first live recording and I am not exactly sure what to expect here. Um, I'm hoping that I was able to get this running on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. If not, my apologies. It will be running on YouTube for sure. And I hope that you've all been able to tune in uh, it's important that I get started on this first step quite quickly because we need it to dry while we're prepping the other stuff. So I'm going to just get right down to it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to prep our 5 by 7 canvases that I've made. I don't know why my camera keeps focusing and not focusing. Uh, but we're going to get these prepped and drying so that we can get started on the next steps here. So I'm just going to take them out of their plastic. get that out of the way. We're going to be starting with these uh, canvases and the paint. We need to get this drying right away so that we have time to get everything else done and hopefully a reasonable amount of time. So I just took them out of their plastic. I mentioned as an afterthought that you might want uh, needle nose pliers depending on what kind of frames you get, in order to pull these little tabs out. Oh, and I guess if you have a hot glue gun, you should get that heating up already, because we'll be needing that to prep our canvases as well. Oops, and I'm bumping my camera. There you go, so I got that plugged in. All right, so I'm gonna start, keep pulling out these tabs here. Again, I'm doing two in order to hopefully allow you guys to keep up with me. I've had a lot of practice doing this, so I've gotten pretty fast at doing it. And it's better for you guys to not feel like you're way behind me. The glass and the uh, paper, we're not actually going to need those at all. You can just put those aside. I use the glass later for other art. I don't actually use it in these at all. I find that it will look shiniest without the glass distracting from the CD pieces themselves. Get the other one going. Oops. glass and paper out of that one as well. We don't need it. So if your hot glue gun is anything like mine, it probably needs a little bit longer to warm up yet. Uh, mine's high powered, which helps a lot, but I know some take a while to get all the way heated up. So that's we're going to just give it a minute for that to happen, and while that is going on... <laughs> I'm not really sure what to say. <laughs> I 
being high powered, I've burnt myself on this gun so many times. I probably like permanently burnt away parts of my fingertips at this point. I'm sure if you're a crafter, you are more than familiar with that sensation. <laughs> I'm gonna just see if this is ready to go yet. Yes, it is. Still a little bit tacky, but I'm gonna start going anyway. I usually do one bit by the back. And then I sort of hold the back up while I am gluing the front in order to make sure it doesn't fall down. I do the gluing on the front because then it keeps the back from looking messy once the product is finished. And what you want to do is you want to make sure you seal off all of the cracks because we're going to be pouring resin directly into here later. And if you do not do this, then you're going to have resin all over the table, which is an absolute mess. If you do actually end up spilling any resin, a great way to clear that up is with a little bit of rubbing alcohol in like a uh, Kleenex, sorry, more like a paper towel. If you put some rubbing alcohol into a paper towel, that does a pretty good job at cleaning up any resin that you might have spilling out. Alrighty. So that one seems pretty good and sealed. If you wait to clean up the resin until it's cured, then the only way to get it off is like with a chisel, so it's best if it doesn't come to that. <laughs> uh, okay, so this one is done. I just need the glue gun to warm up a little bit more. I'm going to get the paint on it right away because I need to get that drying in order to do the next steps. I'm not going to put it on as thick as I usually do, just because I need it to dry pretty quickly. So I'm just going to brush this on. Somewhat thinly, just so that it for sure has a chance to dry as quickly as possible. I'm going to make sure I get all of those glue gun lines that I just made covered up so that it looks nicer when the resin is poured on it. This one can start drying already, even while I'm prepping the next one. Depending what frames you might have used, sometimes I actually paint directly onto the glass if it doesn't have a good background or a good cardboard background on it, which sometimes is the case with these. And I put on too much paint, considering I was trying to put it on thin, but I can use some of that on the next canvas. This one has a bit of a back holder that is kind of useless, but I'm going to keep it in there just as a backup option for somebody to hang it if they want. I'll grab another stick of glue. Get that into my glue gun. I guess it's a little bit preemptive, a little bit too quick. Alright, I'm going to get that first edge of done on this canvas again. And now it's empty. There we go. Perfect. And that's the other bonus of laying that down first. And I can make sure that extra piece on this canvas is centered in case somebody wants to hang something out of it. I should have brought a garbage closer. <laughs> I'll do that when these are drying. Alrighty, and back to making sure you're holding it from the back while you do the front so that you don't have it fall down. You want it to make sure it's as sealed as possible. Don't want any resin leaking out. warm up a little bit before I can finish that edge. I will grab a garbage while it's doing that. Better 
better than having a little accumulating pile on the table here. Handy dandy high power glue gun should be ready to go again. take some of this excess paint off of this canvas and get this one done up. Again, I'm going to just try to make sure that paint is nice and thin, that way it will dry faster for the next steps because we need it to dry right away here in hopes of keeping this video under a couple of hours. <laughs> nice, perfect. And just smooth out some edges on this other one here. Perfect, and let those dry. Clean out my brush later. Perfect, don't need the pliers anymore. And let those dry. Okay, perfect, so now while we are waiting for these to dry, we may as well take this opportunity to get our discs prepped. I have today for the value of our tutorial, some silver and some green and my camera's going out of focus again some silver and green uh, i'm going to ask her to grab some cds and dvds because it's nice to have some silver as well Okay, perfect. So now I have some old DVDs and some old CDs as well. Uh, people have generously donated a bunch of these and I've paid for a bunch of them as I have kind of made a name for myself as the recycler in Regina of old discs. <laughs> I pay people for rarer colors and accept donations of other colors just so that they don't get thrown out. So much better to use them in art when possible than to throw them out. All right, so to prep our discs, we're going to be needing our discs themselves. And this is where we're going to need that clear tape or the book protector that I was mentioning before. And our scissors. So I'm just going to grab these out. And I've misplaced my scissors. Let me see if I can find those. Got them. Sorry about that. Perfect. So with our greens and purples, these guys have more than one layer. So it's very important to prep your discs. And by doing that, all I mean is basically put some tack tack on the back of them. 
I'm just push these out of the way while they're drying in order to show you more clearly here. So I've got four different types of green ones. I guess technically just three different types. So I'm going to lay those upside down here. And then the purple ones, they're all technically the same. So I'm just going to put those face up. If you didn't get book protector, clear mat packing tape is going to be absolutely fine for this. I do have book protector, so I'm going to use it. It looks like I'm just about out, but I do have enough to finish off today. This step doesn't seem to make a lot of sense right now, but I will explain why it is necessary as I go along here. So I'm just going to put this over the back of them, like so, cut off this excess, and reuse it over here. And the same with this. Doesn't need to look fancy, but it is so helpful in future steps, as I will demonstrate for you soon. These are the things I've learned with working so much with this, it's valuable to know. There we go, perfect. So now that the backs are all covered, now we're just going to get rid of the excess around them here. Cut them down the middle. With these green discs, some of them are very flaky, and you might notice that they're trying to lift off of the paper already, or the tape. That is completely normal, that is partly why the tape is there to begin with, because they are a little bit flaky sometimes. So I'm just going to get this all touched up here too. few different brands in order to show you a couple different tips. I'm just going to get the edges cleared up on these silvery green ones. Those are pretty much props. Get the purple ones going. Hear that loud buzzing? That's the water cooler. It should subside soon, hopefully. <laughs> there, it's getting a little quieter.
There's so many people throwing out these discs. It's really nice to be able to upcycle them in art rather than just seeing them end up in landfills. And it's such an easy and beautiful way to reuse them. Alrighty, just about there. I guess the benefit of doing this live is it's easier to tell just how long these processes can take. It's hard to explain to people how long art can take without them seeing live how long it actually takes. I'm just going to reach over and grab my wire cutters. Your uh, CDs and DVDs, they don't require any prep. Uh, not, they don't need any tape on the backs. Purple and the green do, and now is the part where I get to show you why. I'm going to take this one first, this one that has a light colored background because I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, this one's not going to cut very well. Yeah, it's not doing the flaking thing I thought it was going to do, but it's still not cutting great. There's a bunch of different types of green ones. One of them like this one gets a really ragged edge when you are working with it it's not a problem it just looks a little bit messy i need to i usually cut them into quarters and then i cut out the metal piece to throw away after that i'm gonna just cut them into some random shapes to use for a mosaic here you can see that there's actually a layer of paper on the back of these. All of them are this way, the green ones. That piece of paper, some of the discs that you have are going to really flake off and try to come off altogether, whereas other ones are going to stick on a little bit better. Uh, ideally, you get the ones that do stick on better because it's a real pain when this paper does try to just peel off. Um, the reason why we have put, excuse me, put tape on the back is because if you don't do that, it flakes off way worse and the edges just don't look very good. This way it holds it together in a way that is just so much better than to not do that at all. I'm just going to cut this into some random shapes for the back of my canvas here. You don't have to worry about the shapes, you can make them fit in better later. If you are having trouble with the paper layer coming off your green discs, don't fret too much, you can still use them. I would just recommend putting a little piece of tape around them so that it comes to the front, some clear tape, just to hold the piece together in order to not have it slip off your canvas later when we are gluing them on. I'm not sure if any of these are the really flaky kind. This one, again, is not which is what you want, but when you do get one of the ones that flakes off really poorly, really badly, it's important to have that tape and to make it work the best you can. A little bit of flaking happening, but not too bad. Again, just cut it into some random pieces. This one's flaking a little bit more than usual, but sometimes you can't keep the two layers together. Like, it's crazy how much some of them flake versus other ones that don't. It's nicest when they don't, because it's a lot more work when you have to individually tape the back of your paper CD to the front of it. Little bit of flaking is not a problem at all.
All right, and one more green one. If this one doesn't end up being a flaky one, I think that I'm going to just, yeah. This is probably, I've probably already cut more than enough here, so I'm going to stop cutting the green ones and move on to the purple. The purples also have two layers, but rather than having a plastic layer and a paper layer like these green ones do, both layers are harder, which is beneficial. The tape, again, is because without that, you're going to have a lot of trouble with the back of this, sort of just trying to completely flake off. Let me just focus my camera a little bit better here. Without the tape, these pieces would just crumble and turn into nothing. So the tape is really holding that together. It is important to put the tape there. If you ever try this without using tape, you'll see exactly why I say that. <laughs> okay, so these purple ones are two layers. So some of them I'm going to separate on purpose in order to give us a bit more of a color range versus other ones that I'm going to leave together. If you separate the layers, they have a clear plastic layer on top. And yeah, this, this happens a lot too. There, it's a clear purple layer on top, and then the bottom is more of a silvery layer. This happens regularly when you separate them, which is why I usually try to keep them together unless they're coming apart anyway. That clear layer I'll use later, we're not going to use that today. I'm going to make sure I cut pieces that don't have here. It's flaking off even with the tape. That would have just deteriorated into nothing if I hadn't put tape on it first. Uh, I'm going to cut around these holes that I've made because I don't want the pieces that you can see through. I just want the pieces that have this nicer, uh, nicer look to them. So I'm going to cut around those first. And these ones that have flaking off, I don't want to use those with the art today. And you'll be able to see the black through them and it won't look very nice. So this one I'm going to separate and the other one I'm going to leave together. separate. Hopefully they don't get quite as much damage this time. The type of discs that you have may do this more or less than others. This is doing it more than I'd like, but at least they're getting some usable pieces out of these. Sometimes if it really flakes off of this, you can actually use the this side instead use these bits where the silver is still on. Oops. That one's better. A little less damage. Even just pulling this apart, you can see that that tape is holding these pieces together. I'm actually gonna... Yeah. That would be in like six pieces if it wasn't taped together. Those separated into two pieces. And these ones I'm going to separate into keep to keep together to keep this darker purple going. I'm trying to give you a wide variety of pieces that way I can give you tips on anything that you might be using. 
don't actually need that one because I have so many colors on the go anyway. In order to cover one of these 5x7s, you probably need at least a minimum of three full discs. That way, if you have pieces that don't work out, you can throw them out. This happens sometimes too, where they just pop apart, which is fine. I'll just use that in my separated pile now. Sometimes they separate too easily, and sometimes they don't separate easily enough. Lots of chips, even with the tape. It would be a billion times worse if we hadn't put tape on the backs of those. I'm just going to stick this into my garbage. Now I'm going to show you a regular CD. I don't have any issues with any of these CDs. They're just donated and I'm keeping them out of the trash. So I don't think that I don't like Corblund, for example. He's a great guy. <laughs> I just have all my music digitalized as well. I'm going to take out that CD. I'm actually going to disassemble the case itself as well in order to properly recycle this. I'm going to recycle the paper with the paper recycling. And you can pop out the back of this here. That's for the paper recycling too. And then I actually keep the cases to turn them into greenhouses later. So that way I can recycle every bit of it, which is awesome. The more recycling you can do, the better. So these I'm going to put aside for later to turn into a greenhouse. These are going to go into my paper recycling after this session. I'm only going to cut out one CD because that's enough to show you what I'm talking about, hopefully. So the CDs come in one layer. And they have a tendency to do a lot of cracking when you cut them. So you can just see how the, all these pieces are like chipping almost like broken glass. They're not as bad as the other ones, so they don't require paper to hold them together. But you are going to end up with some little shards that are just too small to use. That's totally normal, totally fine. Some discs are going to be so thin that they almost shatter when you cut them. That is also fine. It just means that I guess it does some of your work for you. <laughs> This one is actually not doing what I wanted to show you, so I'm going to actually put this one aside for later and see if I have more luck with another one here. Usually they shatter more than that one just did. And I want to show you what the difference is. Yeah, this one, this is more what I was talking about. This one, every cut that I do is just absolutely shattering it, basically. Sometimes they, like, leap out of your hands. Protective glasses is an option because I have gotten flicked with little pieces of CD before. Shoot them across the living room, the cat plays with them. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely more what I was talking about. Okay, so with these ones, I actually usually just cut them a little bit and then break them off for the rest of the piece because breaking them off creates a cleaner edge than cutting. And then the really small chips I break off on purpose just because they look messy. So I cut it part way and then snap off the rest. You might want to use gloves for this. I don't have any right now, but I have gotten some pretty nasty slivers doing this before. So protective glasses and gloves is not a bad idea when you're working with CD pieces here. And then I'm just going to get it started again on this piece. There we go. Perfect. And that should be more than enough CD pieces to 
fill out these canvases that I got. Alrighty, perfect. And now I'm going to move on to some DVDs because they are, again, different than everything else. Same color, different situation altogether. Alright, so the DVDs. Again, no issues with them. Some of them are scratched, some of them wouldn't play anyway. Just keeping them out of the trash for the most part here. I'm going to try and find a couple different types of examples in these just to show you some more tips. I'll just cut into a random one and see what, work, what, what I'm working with here. So these ones are dual layer, just like uh, unlike the CDs, so they usually cut much cleaner. The really nice thing about these is that you can actually get away with cutting certain shapes into them for the most part. So if I wanted to like do some sort of circular shape or something, or take a pen for example and mark it down to an exact shape, that's when these come in really handy. I'm actually gonna quickly just grab you guys an example here and we'll be right back. Okay, so the times where I use these in my art these are the DVDs because DVDs I can actually cut into shapes like this, whereas the CDs would just snap and shatter. So then I can trace these sizes or shapes onto the back of the disc and get sort of a ideal shape for actually working with the disc itself, which is really handy. DVDs is kind of the best one to get a specific shape out of. Although you do have some issues with the layers trying to separate on a lot of different discs. This layer is now too clear to use and this one is too plasticky and that totally wrecks it. So this, it can be difficult keeping these layers together. Sometimes you just need to work with what's left. So in this case that layer did separate. I'm just going to cut off the good pieces to put in with my silver pile and throw out the bit that got wrecked there. And then these ones I'm going to just cut into random shapes so I don't need to cut them into specific shapes for this purpose. If you don't like that sort of darker gray disc color, you can separate the layers on purpose you end up losing quite a bit. Well, sometimes it does a perfect separation just like that, which is what I was hoping it would do. Now these pieces I can just cut into perfect little shapes. Super easy to cut through. Very awesome. I'm glad that that worked out so well. It can be a risk because you can lose your whole disc trying to separate the layers, but at the same time it can really pay off when it works out that well, where it just separates nice and you've got two silver layers. Work so I'm gonna actually try it again and that one separated really well it's, dude that's perfect it's awesome you're gonna have varying success with DVDs some of them shatter almost just the same as the CDs did that I showed you those ones you can't cut specific shapes out of at all but in the cases like this, then you absolutely can cut out nice, specific shapes. Get a much cleaner edge on the DVDs than you do on the CDs. And much more flexible because you can do more with them. I think that mostly covered what I wanted to show you with the DVDs, so I'm not going to cut any more of those. If you have any questions, feel free to just say them in the chat. I am there to answer your questions. This is pre-recorded, so future me is sitting there. We're prepared and ready to answer any questions you guys might have. I think that is covered pretty much all the colors. 
If you guys found blue discs, treat them exactly the same way as you would with the green discs because they have that paper layer on the back too. Blue is really hard to find, so if you found some blue, I, that's awesome, great, good for you. I would actually probably suggest that you wait to use them for something extra special because they're really hard to come by. <laughs> Okay, so now our canvases are pretty much completely dry, thank goodness, because we're already at 40 minutes and I've barely gotten started here. And yeah, they're both, they're both pretty dry, so I'm going to just start putting on the mosaics onto these canvases now. I've left my glue gun plugged in, so it's probably like really, really hot now, which is not a bad thing. I'm going to do a bit of a gradient style art with this one, I think, in which I'll put the darkest purple up top. Keep your wire cutters handy because if a piece doesn't quite fit in the way you want it to, you can cut it down so that it will fit better. And it's not a bad idea to check that the piece is going to fit the way you want it to before you glue it down. I still have a little bit of wet paint in the corners here. That should hopefully dry up by the time we're actually pouring the resin, which is what's important here. I'm not gonna be as picky as I usually am about making these pieces fit perfect just for the sake of time here. But whatever pieces you use, feel free to start mosaicing them onto your canvas however you feel is the most appropriate. nice darker purple layer up first and then I'm going to move to my light purple my single layer purple ones and put that underneath I drop my next glue stick let me just grab that off the floor you get pretty good eyeballing what's going to fit without checking, which saves a lot of time. But you don't always get it quite right either. And sometimes you're going to definitely need to cut these down just a little bit so that they fit into the space that you want them to go better. And sometimes you can have just the right shape for the right place. <laughs> There you go. One more purple. Right there. Perfect. And I'm going to do a layer of green ones. Hopefully your guys' canvases are all dry enough to be doing this step. If not, maybe you have a hair dryer or something that you can use to speed up the drying process in order to catch up here. 
Again, I'm going to be doing two just to hopefully give you guys enough time to keep up. Because I think it's better for you to be keeping up than for me to leave you way behind and then feel overwhelmed. There we go. This video is definitely not going to be under an hour. Which, of course, I should have known that because I know how long this, this sort of thing takes. I'm thinking we should still be able to get this done within a couple of hours or less. Honestly, cutting the discs and prepping the canvas is some of the more time consuming. And getting these pieces on here can be really time consuming. If you have a bigger than a 5x7 canvas, you're going to really see how just a little bit of a bigger background makes a big difference for taking a lot longer. And it uses up a lot more supplies too, which can get expensive. The resin I use is about $100 per gallon, and there's other ones that are even more expensive than that. It's not cheap working with resin, but it's so much fun. <laughs> that one down to fit in this crack here. Nice. Perfect. Get that a little bit too. I'm going to use a couple of these darker DVD pieces now, the ones that I didn't split into two, excuse me. on to the lightest silver. I'm just going to turn this upside down so I can see what I'm doing better. Just about got this one finished, prepped. Some of my art I've used a, a 
alcoholic ink in order to dye the pieces different colors. There wasn't time to do this that today, and alcoholic ink is also really expensive, so it's not very budget budget wary in order to use the alcoholic ink either, so I didn't make that a requirement for today. If this is a successful tutorial, hopefully I'll be able to do another one sometime that allows you to color the discs, which will be super handy and nice. Again, I'm not being as picky as I usually am. I normally try to make sure these pieces are fitting pretty much perfectly into position, but I just don't... We don't have the time to do that today. There you go. So that one is prepped and it's ready for the next step. In order to hopefully allow you guys to keep up, I'm going to quickly whip together another one here. Hope you guys are all keeping up okay. I don't want to take too much of your time, but I definitely appreciate you coming online to join me. Again, I'm going to just do the same gradient as last time because I think it's pretty. <laughs> So it fits. Close enough. Oops, bump the camera. You'll find different discs also have different levels of rainbow casting ability. The purples and the greens cast brighter, stronger rainbows and the blues than the silvers do. But the silvers are more flexible because I can use them to dye them pretty much any color with a little bit of alcoholic ink. And they do still reflect really nicely. They're just not quite as rainbow-esque as some of these other pieces are. Okay, perfect. That's all my dark purple used up. On to the single layer purples. I've gotten a pretty good eye at seeing where things are going to fit and I can thank my dad for that because growing up 
I spend a lot of time and hours outside helping him cement rock walls and picking out rocks that would fit into holes that he had in the wall that usually fit pretty good. <laughs> I always felt so <laughs> so smart <laughs> as a little kid when I'd pick out a rock that was just the right shape and color <laughs> for it to fit into my dad's rock wall. My parents are both very creative, so they definitely have a lot, have both of them to thank for being such a creative person and for using found objects. We didn't always have a huge budget for craft items, so I used whatever I found. My mom always te used to tease me that if she gave me a pair of scissors and some tape and some uh, white paper, that I'd be able to make anything that I'd need to survive. <laughs> Occasionally, my mom would tell me that I couldn't make something, and she's learned to stop saying that because I'd keep proving her wrong by figuring out a way to make things out of what I had anyway. <laughs> Very blessed to be so, to have such creativity. But it's something you work on too, so if you don't feel very creative, if you practice, anybody can get better at what they do. Perfect, so that's the purple. I'm going to put on some green again. that crack a little bit because that's just a little too big for my taste even when I'm trying to do this quickly there we go perfect that's better We are now at the one hour mark since I started going live. But for those of you that have stuck around, really appreciate you. Thank you very much for your patience with this. I'm trying to go as quickly as I can while still allowing you guys to keep up. And this is my first attempt here, so Depending on the success, I may be doing more live streams, and I may not. We will be seeing how this goes. Me and my husband are expecting our first baby this summer, so I figured that if I was going to give a live stream a try, I better do that before our little shenanigan maker, <laughs> our little baby shows up. We're really looking forward to meeting him. But things are going to get a little bit busy after he comes. Just about got this one all done. Just got some black paint on that piece that hadn't quite dried yet. That's okay.
Alrighty, let's put one more small piece on to cover up this last gap that I don't like. And then we are going to move on to the next step. Hopefully you guys are ready for me. It doesn't matter if it's not put on perfectly. That will get covered up in the resin layer later. I'm going to just put aside these unused pieces because I do not need those anymore. And now it is time to add on our silhouettes or stickers or whatever it is that you have found. So the first one, I'm going to make it super easy and quick. Actually, I know I should do the silhouette one first, just because then those of you that are also doing silhouettes have more time to do that. And those of us using stickers can just slap one on after. So I got my black paper. I am going to just grab a stencil for the silhouette that I'm going to cut out of that. Apparently it was within reach all along. Alrighty, so I've got a nice little bag of silhouettes that I have used before. Every silhouette that I keep saves me some time next time. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to use a Howling Wolf silhouette for the standing canvas. So I'm going to just grab my stencil and reverse it because I'm going to want them facing the other way without seeing the pen on here. Give that a nice quick trace. Wolves are very popular. And why not? They're really cool animals. Alright, and I have been in the habit of adding this guy a bit of a tail. But I think we're going to just leave him sitting as is for this. I'm going to get that cut out. Any simple silhouettes that you guys have will look great as well. I mentioned that colored card stock, sometimes the color changes a bit. If you have colored card stock, that's no issue. It will just look a little bit different after you pour the resin. Whereas with black card stock, what you see is what you get. And I like the predictability of that and the sharpness of the black rather than having colored cardstock that might not show up as sharp against your background, but that's not an issue or a problem either. And my extra paper, I'm going to just throw in my recycling pile. Good to recycle as much as possible. That's why we're here. Alright. I'm happy with that. So now I've got my pen marks on this side. So I'm going to just reverse that, turn it around, and put them on this way. I often do this in two layers to put some more separation and 3 d -ness from the background to the foreground. We don't have time to do that today. If you did want to do this later, it will look nicer in the long run, but for today's purposes, I'm just going to glue him directly onto the base here. If you do let a layer of resin cure first, then you're going to end up with less bubbles, more distance between the layers. It's going to, it will look nicer, but this works too. This is, this will look super good as well. So then that one is ready for the resin to be poured, which is good. Actually, we're catching back up to what my time estimate was. Hopefully it won't go on to two hours. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna do the other one now. And I showed you that pretty butterfly paper art. 
when I was showing you what you're going to need for this. So I'm just going to pick out a butterfly or two for the demonstration here. I'm not exactly sure what colors I'm going to use yet. I think for the purpose of this one I might use the pink. They've got some other varieties and choices here too that I'm just going to quickly look through. Some of these are way too big, some of them are too small. Big butterfly, and let's pick out a small one. I'll make them both pink, why not? Alright, so I'm going to use those two for this one. I actually only have two of these, so I'm going to pick out a different big butterfly. There we go, I got four of these, so I'm going to use that one instead. Generally, I do a little bit of coloring on these with Copic to make them stand out better, but again, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to just stick them on as is because I don't want to keep you guys here for too, too long. And again, egg too, if you want to do this in two separate layers and add a little bit more 3D-ness between the layers, it's going to look better, but you don't have to do that. Okay, perfect. So once you have your silhouettes, stickers, or whatever you've brought along for this tutorial applied onto your canvases, you can officially unplug your glue gun. We won't be needing that again. I don't know why my camera keeps zooming in and out and sorry about that. At least the image is relatively clear. I'm going to just unplug my glue gun so I don't keep wasting power or worse yet, forget it unplugged this evening. Never good when you wake up to the smell of something burning. <laughs> Luckily that's never actually happened aside from the glue itself getting too hot. But yeah, that's a scary feeling when you think you might have forgotten your glue gun going. <laughs> Don't do that. I'm going to pull out some wax paper here just to work on top of it because I don't have complete faith that I seal these canvases off all the way. I don't want them leaking onto my table. That has happened more than enough. We're going to try and minimize. Mimit We're going to try to make sure that doesn't happen. There we go, perfect. I'm gonna go grab the resin and a container to mix it. this old paintbrush to mix the resin. Just going to momentarily put these aside so that you can see. Mix the resin on my secondary camera here. If you have gloves, this is where you want to put them on for pouring the resin. Apparently, yeah, there's the other glove perfect. I thought I lost it. Alrighty, so the resin that I am using today is tabletop art and epoxy resin. It is a easy half and half ratio, which is really handy. So I'm gonna basically just eyeball this year. I usually find some sort of line on my container that helps me to make sure I get half and half. So right now I see a line on there that looks about halfway. 
you guys naturally are going to have to mix like half of the amount that I'm mixing because you're only doing one of these. I have to mix a little bit extra because I'm doing two today. That was the hardener. And now I'm going to take out the A resin. This is thicker. And then as soon as these, <clears throat> excuse me, as soon as these two layers combine, they will start their chemical process of hardening. So you want to work with it fairly quickly. We have a good hour work time with this before it starts getting so hard that you just can't work with it at all, which is really nice. One of the biggest reasons people struggle with their resin staying sticky is that it's either not mixed quite right or it's not mixed enough. So it's good to give it, they suggest a full five minutes of mixing. We're not going to go quite that long, but I'm going to make sure that all the streakiness of this resin is gone before I pour it. Making sure you use your mixer to get right to the bottom. In its liquid state, resin is toxic. Again, if you get any spills, places that you don't want them, rubbing alcohol and a little bit of paper towel is a really good way to get that stickiness off. Once it's hardened, you're going to have a heck of a time getting it out of anything. Unfortunately, I've not found any hacks for getting it out of clothes, which is why I make sure that I wear clothes that don't matter to me when I work with resin. There's definitely some permanent resin drops on this table that I didn't catch in time. I'm pretty sure the only way I can get rid of them now is if I sand it down and revarnish it. Oops, bumped my camera again. Again, just make sure you scrape all those edges. Don't want any sticky bits of resin left over at the end here. And that's looking less streaky. Some bubbles at this point is normal. I think that's just about mixed good enough. We are nearing the end. We are streaming for an hour and 14 minutes at this point. We're just about done. Thank you all for sticking with me. Now I'm going to take half this resin. I think I probably mixed a little bit too much. That's a common flaw I have. So I usually just pour whatever extra I have into molds that I have laying around. This isn't molding resin, but the molds are small enough I can get away with it. You want to make sure you don't make this any thicker than maybe like a quarter of an inch at a time, or you might have trouble with the resin overheating while it cures, and that is not something you want to have happen. I have occasionally put it into a mold that was too big, and it started smoking, so you don't you don't want that to happen. <laughs> I'm just gonna make sure that this resin pours into each crack. There we go, very nice. And lay it down evenly so that the we'll get a nice clear coat on it. This one again, I'm going to just make sure it gets into each corner. You're going to want to keep a bit of an eye on it for the next couple hours because you're going to get bubbles coming up out of your CD pieces and out from underneath your paper as well and it, you want to make sure you pop those before the resin gets too cured. This specific kind of resin I've got a good hour to work with 
it starts getting sticky after the first hour after two or three hours it's it becomes unworkable so any flaws you have with your product at that point you're not going to be able to do a thing about them i'm gonna just grab a nail here to poke out some of my bubbles so with a nail you don't need to use a nail but whatever you've got toothpick or something and it's going to try to make sure that I have no air underneath my stickers, underneath my pieces of paper, because that would cause a bubble later. Just press it down. It seems like I got most of the air out already. Okay, so this is the part where I told you guys that it would be good to either have a lighter or a torch of some kind in order to get these bubbles out. I'm just going to grab my torch now. Please don't burn yourselves. <laughs> but the best way to pop these resin bubbles is to take your blowtorch and just give it a really quick one over with that. Pop those bubbles really nicely. Don't stick in any place too long. You don't want to burn your canvases. It's a good easy way to clear up those bubbles. You can do it with a match or a, sorry, a torch as well or a lighter as well. It's a lot more time consuming and it doesn't work nearly as well, but as a backup option you can. A lot of these bubbles would clear on their own in time, it's just faster and more convenient to use the torch. I'll probably let these sit about 20 minutes and I'm going to hit them with a the torch again because there is going to be more bubbles coming out of these. Uh, so this first layer is going to take about 24 hours to mostly cure. So you just want to put them somewhere that your animals or your kids are not going to get in to them for the next 24 hours. It takes about 7 days for them to fully fully cure, but mostly they should be all good to go by tomorrow. Uh, and I guess that wraps up my video. Thank you guys so much for joining me live. And please, if you have any feedback of how this could go smoother, or what parts you enjoyed. I would love to hear from you guys. Just comment in the section or message me if you have any questions. Hopefully I've been doing a good job, futuristic me, of answering any questions you had while this is on air. And if you had fun, let me know that you would be interested in seeing another tutorial of a similar variety in the future. Thank you guys again so much for joining me really appreciate it and hope to hear from you all and I would love to see pictures of what you've come up with as well so if you want to send me a picture of what you made awesome I would love that thank you again for joining me and I hope you all have an excellent rest of the day